Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering HPE Discover 2017. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas for theCUBE's exclusive three days of coverage of HPE Discover 2017. This is uh, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante, uh, partner in crime here. Our next guest is Anna Pinsuk, Senior Vice President, General Manager of HPE Point Next, the new organization. That's correct. Yeah. Welcome to theCUBE, good to see you Thank again. Thank you, really nice to see you as well. Yeah, excited to be here with you guys. CUBE alumni, also part of the Grace Hopper community as well with women in tech. Great work there, just want to give Thank a proper you. shout out yeah. there. Thanks okay, so lot. you're in, the, you're in the, the new job here. Uh, you're a seasoned veteran, you know yes. the industry. Your thoughts, I mean, you're coming in fresh. Yeah, I'm coming in fresh. So first of all, three whole months here, you know? <laughs> so it's been, uh, you know, it's been a kind of a whirlwind since uh, we came on board. Um, we announced a new brand. So HP Point Next is the new brand for really our future-facing yep. services organization, right? Um, and we've got this great opportunity. You know, we've got customers that are really undergoing tremendous digital transformation, right? And they need help. Uh, and we're the arm of HP that can really help them through that journey, all the way from sort of advise and transform services, professional services, like design and implementation services, and then when we go to operational support services as well. So One of the things that Meg Whitman was talking about, I want to get your thoughts and reaction to is, she said it's a cleaner positioning with HPE now because of the partner relationships have always been centric. We had the chief channel officer on earlier, Denzel. 70% of the revenues comes from partners. That's uh, right. And so, Having point next the way it's structured makes it cleaner. What is she cleaner for everyone to understand yeah. what's happening? What does she mean by that? And give us your perspective. Yeah. Well, I'll give you, you know, look, before uh, we had a huge outsourcing business, right? And with the DXC business moving off, we've got the opportunity to really partner with the Accentures, the Deloitte's, the Wipros, the Tatas of the world, right? We provide mostly technology services, so to the extent that they go and they help customers with applications and really figuring out their business processes, then we come together with them and then figure out how to translate that business architecture to the technology architecture, and then how to do that technology roadmap for them, right? So um, it's really positioned us um, much closer to different kinds of SIs, both sort of the traditional SIs as well as other ecosystem partners. And uh, today, I mean, if you think about mostly every vertical is transforming, right? So whether you're in retail mm -hmm. or transportation, et cetera. And uh, frankly, with DXC, you know, really going off, uh, focusing on outsourcing, we're still a huge partner of theirs. You know, they're a customer yeah. of ours. But at the same time, it opens up uh, huge opportunities to go after other verticals and other solutions yeah, as well. Yeah, it's kind of a strange TAM expansion for the core of Hewlett Packard yeah, Enterprise. Is. You sort of concede the outsourcing business. Okay, we're out of that business. That's right. but but now you've got so many other partners that, that really could boost your core business. Yeah, and you know, I, I mean, uh, nobody owns Advise and Transform, right? I mean, no, nobody owns the whole digital transformation journey. The, the opportunity there uh, greatly sort of uh, outweighs the, the constraints that we have in, in that space, right? And so, you know, it's really important for us to go with the Accentures or the Deloitte's, yeah. other partners, and be being able to come with them and provide those solutions to customers. And I'd like to get your thoughts on, on the trend, and the particular question is going to be around the cloud uh, transformation, which is the driver. And you got big data, you got IoT, so you have, obviously, your hybrid IT is the message here, but, yeah. you know, cloud computing in general and big data point to a new set of applications. Dave and I always comment on theCUBE as we go to all these different events that you know, we're old enough to remember the 80s and 90s. Old. <laughs> the 80s and 90s, the ERP generation, the mini computer was a massive uh, opportunity for service providers. Right. You know, you had the big six accounting firms back in the day, now you have thousands of partners. That was a big movement, that was a big wave. It is. This wave is almost bigger than that, but different. What's different now as the new, new apps come out? Yeah. And, and we've seen this movie before in a way. Yes. With the ERPs of the world and CRMs. Yeah. What's different now with cloud that makes this bigger and what's your thoughts on this yeah. opportunity? Well, I think two, two things for me. One is, in fact, over the last couple of days, we've been talking to a lot of customers about not, not what I would consider traditional, but even S, you know, SAP HANA, right? And those migrations, those are like a little bit like still the old wave, you know, uh, with new, a, a sort of a new flavor to it as people go more into big data and analytics as well. But the biggest thing is that, you know, think about the world of the future. Everything's going to communicate with everything else. Everything is going to compute, right? And so, you know, the, the patterns of 
uh, communications are really shifting as well, right? It used to be very data center st uh, centric in yeah. those traditional models or in the old IBM <laughs> models of the 80s, yeah. right? And, big iron, uh, big all iron, the and everything in the you know servers and the data center. But think about you know your toaster talking to you. You know, think about smart meters out there. Yeah. Think about your car being really a roaming you know office and entertainment center, right? Yeah. So I think that's what's really yeah. shifting. It's just the magnitude of of data that's going to be um, you know computable in a sense at the edge. And that's really um, helping us think about whole new different applications that we didn't have you know, back then. So cloud is obviously this huge mega trend and <clears throat> everybody who Hewlett Packard Enterprise included is trying to substantially mimic the cloud experience on-prem, create hybrid. Uh, and it seems like you're having a great deal of success there, at least early, some early wins. The other component of that is the business model side yes. of things, the whole as a service piece of it. Yes. And as you transition into that you know, cloud-like world, what happens on the business model side? I mean, we've heard a lot about flex capacity and things That's of that right. nature, but it feels like the services business can transform dramatically yes. into that model. I wonder if you could no, comment on true. that. it's true. I mean, just think about it. In the more traditional world, we've been mostly a product company right. with sort of services attached. You know, you sell a, a hardware uh, box and you attach support to it and, and some installation yeah. services. We're completely shifting the model, right? So we're really services led and hardware attached, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, of the model going forward. And uh, so that's one thing that's shifting. And then the business models are really outcome based. You know, so yeah. I'll, I'll give you an example. You know, I was talking to a customer, in fact, earlier this morning about providing retail store as a service. That's a very different model, right? That, that means that we're looking at the whole architecture for them. We're looking at what value constitutes in a retail store, you know, how do they make money, what that outcome should be, right? Then how do you deliver that as a solution on a per, you know, something basis, per outcome basis, so, right? So completely shifts the way that we think about delivering services. And, and so is it become services as a service? I mean, do you go I call to- it, Yeah, I mean, I've been calling it, you know, experience as a service, and right. it is service as a service, or outcome as a service. I mean, in a sense, what the customer cares about is the value that they get out of that thing that you deliver to them, right? Um, and so- It's important to them. I mean, It's important to it's them, that's the thing. That's their business, that's what they care about. Um, you know, uh, I'll give you an example. Data is so important. Back, back, uh, backing up your data is really important. But what the, care, what the customer cares about is not whether they have backup, but yeah, it's whether the backup can, actually worked. Can, you can know? I recover? And can I recover <laughs> from it, restoring, yeah. right? So when you think about that, you know, yeah. experience as a service, the experience is, geez, you know, did I get my data backed up and can I restore, recover from it? And then that becomes the outcome that they want. This is the digital transformation. I mean, digital transformation has been around for a while. It's been that buzzword, certainly center stage here, but you're talking about business transformation. You're talking about really changing how companies are doing business. That's correct. Chop line revenue driven by digital services or digital apps or That's interfaces, right. That's experiences, right. whether it's feeling good or actually delivering something. That's right. And you know what's happening? I mean, think about the retail uh, store of the future, right? I mean, uh, you know, you have you, you have a teenage daughter or a teenage son, as I have. You know, you want to make it really uh, interesting for them to go into a store and have a different kind of experience, right? And so, you know, location-based services, all these ex all these things that you can enable in terms of you know helping them buy new things or getting you know, um, I don't know, some sort of discount when they yeah. go into the store or really seeing what it looks like when it's on. You know, yeah. uh, those are the experiences yeah. of the future that are going to make that retailer relevant. Yeah. You know, especially. Well, we're going to have my daughter. Place. She's down in the front desk. She's interning for us. She's a Berkeley student. So, uh, say hi to her. She's going to come in and tell us about what she thinks of HPE oh, as, a, as a youngster. But more importantly, um, this is a big trend. I mean, we're yes. seeing, uh, and I want to talk about the women in tech piece of, yes. of what you're involved in because, you know, we were having a conversation at dinner two nights ago that, yeah. you know, people who consume technology, whether they're the end user, and that word doesn't even exist, edge user that's or right, right. consumer, that's right. end user, that's a word, isn't even a word anymore. Isn't that, yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> who is we that? We call them end user. I know. But people or who end are. end thing <laughs> in the future. We're, yeah. all, <laughs> we're all connected, right? That's so, right. So that, this makes up this 50% of the population is women. That's right and they're not making the products as much. So the yeah. percentage of women in tech 
is a big issue. I know you're, you're involved with Grace Hopper. Yes. Your thoughts on women in tech, because we need more women building products or being involved in the design of Yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's a great, as you know, it's a great passion uh, area for me. And we've got about, you know, if you think about computing, we've got about 17% or 18% of the graduates come out in computer science, right? But if you think about technology in general, you know, because everything is going to be digital, because everything is going to compute, you now have, uh, for example, women that are going into tech that have sort of a, a real different variety of backgrounds, right? Yeah. I mean, they can be designers because your fabrics are going to be sort of lit up <laughs> with, you know, with sensor technologies. Yeah. Uh, your knees will be, you know, will have capabilities that are com computational, you know. So, uh, what we're seeing is the opportunity to open up this space for women because yeah. some of the um, things that are out there that are going to be technolo technology are going to be much more interesting generally to to women. Uh, in, so if know, I get this right, you're saying is that it's, okay, we want more people, uh, more women in software, that's but that, right. that's not the restriction. It should be computer science now is broader. That's data right. analytics, I mean, we see a lot of women who are crushing it in being right. great data scientists. That's right. And bring that's some right. creativity to it or yeah. expertise. And that stat, you said 17% uh, with, right. with a degree. That's a, right. And, and a, a, sm a much smaller percentage actually enter the technology field, correct? Yeah, you know, and, yeah, and, what happens, I mean, especially, we, we get about 17 to 22% right. or so that enter the technology field, but then many of them don't stay, you know, especially there's, you know, yeah, yeah. They, there's attrition as you go up the, up the chain as well. Okay, yeah. so maybe this new dynamic yeah. you know, changes that. Yeah, well, I mean, I think the kinds of degrees that people are getting, you know, every degree will have a technology aspect sure. to it, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, you're in, you're in uh, textiles, or you're in, you know, design, healthcare. or you're, you're in healthcare, Science, everywhere. you're in, you know, yeah, you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, every degree will have an aspect of tech. And that means, frankly, that we as a tech industry have to open up the kinds of people that we attract. Yeah. Right, we, we, yeah. we've got to look for not just computer science people, but people that understand yeah. business processes, you know, people that understand industry verticals, because digital is going yeah. to all these different sort of, you know, places. And you're an inspiration, thanks for all that work, and, and we agree, science is everywhere now. Yeah, that's right. And whether it's blockchain or some sort of medical breakthrough, that's right. you don't have to be a hardcore programmer. That's right, that's right, <laughs> awesome. exactly. Anna, yeah. thanks so much for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate Thank sharing you. your insight, congratulations on the new me. opportunity. Yeah, appreciate and, it. And uh, Point Next is, is uh, pointing to what's to next. Be. That's right, as I tell, <laughs> tell people. <laughs> it's like dabbing and pointing <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> thanks so much, really appreciate okay. it. Thank I'm John so Furrier, Dave Vellante, live coverage of HPE Discover 2017. Our seventh year covering HPE Discover, now HPE Discover in the second year. We'll be right back with more live coverage after this short break. <laughs>